Take Me Back. That's Matt Anderson live here on WNCW down in Studio B. It's a tune from his album Halfway Home by Morning that just uh, came out, uh, I guess, a couple months ago, right? Yes, yeah, back couple, in February, I think, March. Yeah, March. Yeah, from, I think officially March 22nd. And, that sounds uh, right, okay. sure. But some of us <laughs> radio stations get them a little bit early. Um, I, I, it was that voice that really um, kind of impressed me a, on first impression of this record. And then, of course, to get to know uh, the great arrangements and production stuff and the songs and so hearing you live down here in Studio B, just you and your guitar, yep, that voice. Cool, right on. Good. It's a real thing. <laughs> we, uh, our station here, we, we try to uh, keep on top of uh, the great uh, artists in various genres, independent and otherwise. And uh, it turns out uh, you've kind of been away from our radar until now. Well, I'm, I'm happy to be here now. It's a, all good. A bunch of records uh, up until this one, some uh, nine or so records. And you're from New Brunswick. Yes. And uh, you still live in there? Uh, I live in Nova Scotia now, just outside of Halifax. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And uh, so get us up to speed on on your previous nine records. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> do, do you come from maybe from like a more of a blues background or was it country? I kind of grew up listening to whatever my folks had in their tape collection, really. Lots of uh, lots of classic country for them, I guess, like the Highwaymen kind of stuff. And my brothers had lots of classic rock, you know, lots of Clapton and CCR. So it was kind of really whatever, whatever I could get my hands on when I was a kid, yeah. Yeah, cool. And uh, was there kind of a, a light bulb moment that made you realize, I can make this music too? Um, now, I mean, around home, music's a big part of the culture. You know, my family all played, my brothers played, mom played and sang, my grandfather played. So it was just kind of something you did to fit in more than anything, really. <laughs> kind of yeah. fell into it. And uh, I was working a day job and playing music on the weekends. And they told me I needed to wear a beard net for my sideburns. And I gave them my two weeks notice and I've been playing full time ever since, really. Well, you know, we, we, we don't want to make fun of folks that have to wear those beard nets, Not at all. But. No, man. Nope. But I, uh, <laughs> no, I was just, uh, I don't know, I figured I was falling asleep on the way to work and falling asleep on the way to gigs. I had to quit one, so it wasn't really that tough of a decision. Okay. Really. Yeah. Yeah. And you, and you haven't looked back, huh? Not at all. Nope. Cool. Cool. Sounds like your career just keeps growing and growing with the... Uh... Yeah, I've been really lucky. I mean, I'm, I'm this year we're doing well over 100 shows this year for sure, so we'll be out pretty steady and a couple trips to Europe and going to Australia and, uh, you know, a big tour down here and... Yeah, just just being on the road, pretty constant, loving it. Do you sometimes tour with a band? Yeah, in Canada, I did a band. We did a nine piece. Wow. I did the whole yeah, the whole racket. Took them on the road, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Kind of playing bigger venues at home, so I can get away with it because sure. it costs a lot to take nine people on the road. <laughs> That's either a whole lot of guitars or a great choir of singers or maybe a nice horn section. Well, yeah, we had a four-piece horn section. There you go. And uh, they all sang <laughs> and the keys and then another guitar player myself on the rhythm section. So it's uh, it was a lot of fun. It was really cool to be able to do songs like they are on the album live, which was uh, don't always get that luxury, really. Yeah. So now you're on a U.S. tour way down here in the South. Uh, just a solo gig for tonight. And uh, you were, uh, well, last night you were in Atlanta. Yeah. And Charlotte before that, yeah. the night before last. I hope the Queen City, Charlotte, treated you well. Yeah, it's been a great tour. I've been loving it. We've had some long drives, but the gig's been worth it, so it's all good. Cool, cool. You're at uh, Isis Restaurant Music Hall in West Asheville this evening, and then tomorrow in Carborough, North Carolina. It's Matt Anderson on WNCW. How about another song? Sure. Matt Anderson here on WNCW, visiting us here in Spindale for the first time, down from uh, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick before that, playing tonight in Asheville, tomorrow in Carborough. Sounded good, sounded good. Nice. You recorded this uh, album, Halfway Home by Morning, in Nashville. I did. Southern Ground Studios. Yes. That's a that's Zach Brown's place. It, it is. Yeah. I have... Uh, I've been there. I haven't been to many studios, but I went to that one. Can you describe what it's like in there? Because it's pretty impressive, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's, it's an old church, I think is what it was originally. And, um, yeah, it's just such a great setup. You know, we had uh, we did everything live off the floors. So we had the horn section and everything in there when we did the session. And uh, so we needed a big space, and it was perfect for that, you know, all on the floor. And uh, and downstairs they had a great kitchen set up. You know, they had somebody there cooking meals. So it was uh, definitely luxurious, but it was pretty great to not have to leave. You know, everybody taking off and doing their own thing. It was like a nice family vibe in there for sure. So it was, uh, yeah, it was a great place to work. I love being in there. That's cool. I know the Wood Brothers, a band we love a lot. Yeah. We've recorded there a few times and some other ones too. Uh, you've been um, get to know some different cities uh, here in the U.S. and mm -hmm. Canada over the years with all your touring around. But you went from, you live in Nova Scotia now, you say, mm -hmm. but you came all the way down here to Nashville to record. It, it's kind of a no-brainer if you if you want to make a good kind of Americana album. Nashville is a great go-to place. But can you describe uh, what it was that, that 
brought you down there in particular? You know, is there really? It was more logistics than anything, which kind of takes some of the magic out of it. But oh, uh, man. <laughs> it was uh, my producer is originally from Vancouver on the west coast in Canada, but he lives down there now. And um, yeah, it was just kind of made more sense. It was close to his home base. All the musicians, a lot of the guys were local. Actually, for the most part, just the horn section was really local guys, and everybody else we kind of brought in from different places. But uh, yeah, I mean, and Nashville's definitely got a vibe, you know. Even aside from that stuff, you know, being uh, in Music City, you know, when that kind of thing's going on, was was uh, pretty great to kind of step out and know there's music going on around the whole time. And and if you needed a musician, you just had to look in the phone book and drop your finger. You'd probably find somebody. Yeah, cool. So you were able to do that. It wasn't just you know, hold yourself up in the studio. You got to go out and soak in some of the vibe. Yeah, I've been, I've been down in Nashville a few times. And uh, so when it comes time to record them, though, I pretty much just locked in for four days, and that was our uh, our thing. But uh, I had a couple of days off after that. We got to kind of chill out. We were down there for 4th of the July, which was just insane. Yeah. 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 yeah it we, was uh, more we, fireworks than I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> <for sure>. yeah. <laughs> right on. Uh, who's your producer that you mentioned? Uh, Steve Dawson. Heard of him. Yeah. yeah, he's worked on lots of great Ruse stuff. And... Um, We've kind of been in the same circles for years, but never really have hooked up all that much. You know, a couple of festivals together, but uh, when we were deciding, you know, who we wanted to work with, I just listened to some of his earlier stuff that he's worked on, and just great, you know. And, and for recording live off the floor, not everybody, not every producer is up for that, but Steve definitely was, that's his wheelhouse for sure, you know, just getting great musicians in a room and pushing the buttons, and that was, it was great. Loved it. Was that his idea or your idea? To um, mine, I wanted to make an album like that, yeah. and uh, that's why we went towards Steve, too, because I know he would be, he would be up for that. Now, that was a, st a stipulation for me you know, with the producers. I want to be able to do it live off the floor like that. You were ready to fire him if he said no. <laughs> well, <laughs> before, you, before you hired him, I guess we had that discussion. <laughs> <laughs> the good idea. All right. See, see, we, we always like to folks to learn, you know, from the professionals exactly, yeah. how to do it. And yeah. there you go. Plan in advance. Stuff like that. Uh, Matt Anderson uh, here. Uh, you've you've gotten a bunch of awards and, and Juno nominations. Mm -hmm. Great. Some of them are some cool blues awards. Yep. Got a favorite blues artist or two that just really oh, totally. Oh man, um, Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee were somebody I kind of latched onto when I kind of dug into them. Um, I'm always kind of drawn more, of, I guess, to the folk side of stuff a little bit. But uh, that said, Roy Buchanan is one of my favorite guitar players. I love listening to that. Just Telly, just kind of rip your head off is always fantastic. Uh huh. Cool. Uh, and I know. Uh, well, I kind of get the sense that you've spent a little time around Memphis, maybe just from you know. The awards show there mm -hmm. and stuff you're playing there. Um, a lot of times it's either Chicago blues or Mississippi blues, but right. maybe you've uh, you've been drawn to some of the Piedmont blues from here in the Carolinas. Yeah, that's I kind of I was when I you know when I started playing solo, that's kind of a lot of the stuff I started listening to to kind of figure out how to uh, make as much sound with one guitar as I could, and that was uh, that's where I went to was listening to that kind of stuff. Cool. Yeah. Well, let's hear another tune or two from sure. Matt Anderson here this afternoon. Live music here in Studio B from Matt Anderson this afternoon. Tell me about that song. Where'd that come from? That is um, a song called Coal Mining Blues. And uh, in Nova Scotia, there's an island called Cape Breton. Actually, a few spots in Nova Scotia as well on the mainland. Um, coal mining is a big part of the life there. And it's uh, used to be anyway. And it's a job we have a lot of respect for, the guys who did that work. And... Um, yeah, it was just the, the inspiration for that tune. You know, those guys went down the mines and didn't worry about themselves, just did what they had to do to take care of their families. And, uh, yeah, they, they, a lot of the people in that area still hold on to those values for sure. They just do what you got to do to get the job done kind of thing. So, uh-huh, yeah. uh-huh. Is, uh, is the mining industry still pretty strong there? No, mining dried up uh, quite a few years ago, really. Okay. But uh, the mentality of, you know, that, that whole uh, idea of, you know, doing what you have to do to get by was uh, is definitely still there. yeah. I get the sense that you uh, do maybe a little more traveling to Europe to perform than than a lot of us uh, American artists, uh, independent artists. I think you have maybe a little more of a support network there to do so, or maybe it's just it's just more of a go-to thing. Uh, um, yeah, for us, I mean, it's uh, there are a lot of Canadians that go over for sure. I mean, they love uh, you know America and like roots music over there, and it's uh, I think it's. Uh, I don't know. It's worth the trip now. I guess oh, we sure. get over there yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. and it's also it's just uh, for us. For, you know, on where I live in Halifax, you know, it's a five six hour flight, and you're there, so it's almost quicker to get there than it is to the West Coast. So, that's true. Yeah. You're right. It's just skip over the pond there, Pretty the much, Atlantic yeah. pond, and there you are. Yeah. And you've picked up a couple of international blues uh, awards. Yeah, I've been there. torn over there quite cool. a bit, and I guess they liked it. And <laughs> uh, and and I, I brought it up because of that that mining <coughs> song. Have you played in Wales? Mm -hmm. Big. Yeah. Need to, yeah. I mean that the coal mining tune. I mean it's um, it, it's popped up a lot of places I've traveled all over the world. If not coal, at least there's some kind of mining that seems to be, you know, inherent in a lot of uh, a lot of communities for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, 
anyone in your family from that tradition too, the coal mining? Uh, nope, no, no mining around where I live so much. Lots of logging. Right. right. Oh, yeah. right. New yeah. Brunswick, different. Yeah. yeah. Lots of trees. <laughs> you mentioned uh, your parents and, and grandpa and all mm-hmm. others play music. What, what kind of music did your grandfather do? Ah, uh, lots of gospel tunes, and um, he played fiddle, so that was a big thing growing up in the house. You know, his 80th birthday, there was probably 15 fiddles, a bunch of guitars, all that kind of thing. Anytime the music, the family got together, there was always music, so it was, uh, yeah, it was uh, a constant around home. Is it the Cape Breton style of music that, that we know of a little uh, here? Not so much. Yeah. His was more, in New Brunswick, we had a lot more of the Acadian influence, Yeah, and uh, some Scottish and Irish, too, and maybe some more of the English kind of stuff, but uh, yeah, a little more of a hodgepodge than, the, than just the Cape Breton stuff. Well, the, the Acadian, more for those that don't know, more from the the, the French mm-hmm. immigrants, and and hence the Cajun, yeah, absolutely style yeah. that we know down in Louisiana. They had an exodus and moved on down. Yeah, there's a lot of French in in, in North Shore, New Brunswick, for sure. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, it's been uh, great getting to know you, Matt, and your fine music. Playing tonight at the Isis Music Hall in Asheville, and then tomorrow in Carbro. And let's hear one more song. Okay? Absolutely. All right, Matt Anderson and a song, What Would Your Mama Say, that kicks off his new album, Halfway Home by Morning. A great, great new release for 2019. Thanks for playing that, and thanks for coming today. And your guitar is sounding great. i got to ask, what, what, what's your uh, acts of choice it's here? It's a today? Lakewood. They're made in Germany, and, uh, yeah, I've had I've been playing these for the last 10 years or so. Yeah. All right, yeah. Lakewood. Lakewood. I haven't heard of that one. All right. Yeah, they're not super popular over here, but they're, they're great. They travel well, and my uh-huh. little buddies, yeah. Cool, cool. Well, you make it sing. <laughs> Thanks, That's man. great. Matt Anderson, uh, again, playing tonight in Asheville at the Isis Restaurant and Music Hall. Thanks for coming in. Uh, live Studio B sessions on WNCW brought to you by Sierra Nevada Brewing Company.